back to my channel. So today I thought I would film a little makeup tutorial for you guys. This look was of course inspired by pinups and Marilyn Monroe. I definitely tried to incorporate as much of Marilyn Monroe's makeup tips and tricks as possible in this makeup look today. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, so first we're going to start off with the brows and as you can see from this reference photo, Marilyn's eyebrows are in almost a triangular arrow shape. So that is what I am going to mimic. So I'm just mapping out the shape with an eyebrow pencil and then I'm going to go over the shape with an eyebrow powder so that I can mattify the brows a little bit. Next, I'm going to clean up the edges with a Q-tip, which is why we did the eyebrows first before the foundation. And then I'm going to apply some brow gel to really hold those brow hairs in place. Now, pinup makeup is typically more on the matte side, but Marilyn Monroe's makeup is usually very dewy. So I decided to go the Marilyn route and I chose a hydrating primer. So I apply the hydrating primer all over my face and then just on the t-zone area I applied a pore filling primer and when applying primer I like to use a really dense brush and really push it into the pores so that all of my pores are filled and my skin looks flawless while the primer is settling into my skin I just went ahead with some concealer and really sharpened up those eyebrows now one of Marilyn's secrets to really dewy skin was using Vaseline as her primer before applying foundation. But since I know that my pores will get super clogged if I use Vaseline, I'm going to achieve a similar effect by mixing in an illuminator with my foundation. And just like with the primer, I like to use a very dense brush to really push in the product so that I can create a very flawless finish. And when applying foundation, I always like to drag a little bit down the neck so that my face and my neck aren't two completely different shades. Now I'm just going in with a concealer that's just a hair lighter than my foundation and I'm applying it on my eyelids to cover the veins and on just certain areas that need just a little bit more coverage. When you apply liquid foundation with a brush, you typically are left with some brush strokes, so I like to get rid of those by patting a wet beauty sponge over my foundation to create a seamless finish. To set my foundation and concealer, I'm just using a translucent powder, and this is actually the first time I'm using this translucent powder. It actually has a cooling effect, which is the first time I'm experiencing this, as you can see. Um, so I thought that was really cool for the cooling effect. <laughs> Get it? Cooling effect? Cool. <laughs> so funny. For this look, I actually decided to bake under the eyes, not just to brighten up the under eyes, but also to catch any fallout from the eyeshadows that we'll be applying. For the eyeshadow, I'm actually looking at this picture for inspiration. And as you can see, Marilyn kind of has like a half circle, but a swooped half circle drawn on her eyelid and I'm just using a bronzer right now just to map out the shape and then I'm going to go back in with these cool tone browns I'm just mixing a couple of the cool tone browns together to get the right shade and then I am just going over the bronzer and again copying the same shape that she has in this picture and I would suggest using a cool tone brown because cool tone browns and grays are really good for creating a shadow effect. Towards the end of the eyes, I am using an angled brush to really create that little flick and also to really define that line a little bit more. And although you can really see this line in Marilyn's crease, it's not a very harsh line. So I'm going to go back and forth with blending out the line and then applying more product to define the line. There's a lot of going back and forth with blending for this look. Even though it looks really simple, there is a lot of blending. So keep that in mind. For the main star of the eyeshadow look, I am going to use this really pearly, almost silvery white liquid eyeshadow. It's actually very old. It's from Avon, I believe. 
but there are a lot of dupes out there. If I do find one, I will link one down below, but I'm just really painting this on to the lid, but avoiding that line that we created earlier with the cool brown shadows. I'm also going to add this shadow in the inner corners and the bottom inner third of the bottom lash line, as well as the little flick. I'm going to kind of flick out this eyeshadow to create a little wing. Since this product is a little old, which by the way, I do not suggest using old products, but this is all I had on hand. So since this is a little bit old, I'm going to use a little bit of translucent shimmery powder to kind of set the eyes a little bit. And then I'm going back in with this really nice but very subtle highlight. It's actually labeled as a bronzer for some reason, but it is a drugstore highlight. And I'm going to use that to kind of merge the area between the liquid eyeshadow and the brown line that we created. But make sure to not completely blend away the line. If you do, you can always go back in with more brown eyeshadow to define the line just a little bit more. Then I'm taking a very concentrated amount and just applying that to the center of the eyelids so that the light can really catch it and look really beautiful. Now I'm taking a pencil brush and those same cool tone browns and slightly smudging that on the lower lash line. But make sure to not really blow out this look. Just get it as close as you can to the lash line as possible. Now it's time for the dreaded winged liner. First, I'm going to very slowly map out the shape that I want with a pen liner. And then contrary to popular belief, Marilyn actually used a dark brown eyeliner, so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to actually mix my own since I didn't have any brown eyeliner on hand. And I'm going to take the same cool tone browns that we used for the eyeshadow look and then I'm going to mix that with my Inglot Duraline. This mixture made the absolute perfect chocolatey brown eyeliner which was absolutely perfect for this look. Another one of Marilyn's makeup tricks was to take a liner and create a shadow. As you can see, I'm doing the same here. And this was to create the illusion that her lashes were just so heavy and droopy that they casted a shadow on her face. To give the eyebrows a little lift, I'm going to mix this white eyeshadow and a champagne eyeshadow and use that as my brow bone highlight. Marilyn also used white eyeliner on her waterline to create big, doe-like eyes, so I am doing the same. She would also apply some white eyeliner between her winged liner and the shadow that we created earlier. So I'm doing the same, but with white eyeshadow. Now it's time to curl the lashes and apply some mascara. And for this particular look, I concentrated most of the product on the outer lashes. And then with less product on the wand, I would go back in towards the inner lashes. And I did the same for the bottom lashes as well. Here, I'm just dusting away the baking powder that I had on earlier, and we are going to move on to contouring. Now, Marilyn didn't really have any harsh contouring, so that is what I'm going for. I'm going to look at these reference photos and try to recreate her heart-shaped face. For the nose contour, I'm going to take the contour all the way up to my brow bone to really connect the whole look together. And then I'm going to add a little bit of extra contour powder just around the tip of my nose like so to create a button nose effect. And when contouring to reshape the face, I would definitely suggest using a gray powder versus a bronzer. For blush, I'm using this really pretty dusty rose shade. And I'm actually not going to apply this on the apples of my cheeks, but instead applying it right on the contour lines that we applied earlier and Marilyn actually used blush to contour her face so that is what I'm doing here and I'm also going to add a little bit on the tip of the nose for a little bit of a rosy flush going back to this highlight I'm going to apply it using the reference photos and really bringing out the cheeks a little bit as you can see in the center of her face is where she has most of the shine going on, so I'm going to mimic the same. 
And Marilyn had some really pretty cheekbones, so I'm going to bring my cheekbones out by adding just a subtle amount of highlight on the high points of my cheeks. For an extra rosy glow, I decided to go back in with a blush topper. A trick that I often use with my makeup is to take a big kabuki brush or a big fluffy brush and really blend everything together to make sure that everything looks seamless. And make sure to do this part very gently so that you don't actually wipe away all of the hard work that we put in. Now I'm just going to add some falsies and these are perfect because they flare out towards the end of the lashes. Marilyn would often use a half set of lashes and place them on the outer end of her lash line. So I'm going to do the same but I'm using the full set. And as I'm showing you here, I'm going to concentrate on putting them towards the end of my wing liner. Here I am attempting one of Marilyn's makeup tricks which was to add some red liner on the inner corners of the eyes and this was to make the whites of your eyes really stand out. Now for one of the most iconic parts of the makeup look, the lips. I'm first going in with a dark red eyeliner and drawing out the shape of the lips. And again I'm using reference photos for this. Next, I'm using a deep ruby red lipstick and I'm slowly starting to create an ombre effect. I'm using a lip brush for more precision and I'm slowly smudging that into the lip liner that we applied earlier. Then I'm going in with a lighter and brighter red lipstick and I'm applying that to the center of the lips and then smudging that into the darker red lipstick that we applied earlier with the lip brush. To create that extra full pout, Marilyn, or I should be saying her makeup artist, Whitey, would pack on some white powder in the center of her lips to really catch the light and look really full. And they would layer the white powder with the lipstick and just keep adding layer upon layer to really create that volume. Since Marilyn went for that glossy look, I'm going to do the same. I'm first adding a dark red gloss on the outer edge of the lips and then I am going to go back in with a brighter glossy red lipstick. And just like the eyes, there's a lot of going back and forth with blending and adding layer upon layer. So that is what I'm doing. I'm adding my powder, well in this case it's highlight, but I'm adding my highlight to the center of the lips and then I am adding more lip gloss and then I'm going back and forth until I achieve the desired look. Then for that final touch, I'm adding some clear gloss right on the center of the lips for an extra juicy pout. I'm then going back in with some concealer and cleaning up the lines of the lips to make everything look more crisp. Now it's time to add Marilyn's signature beauty mark. As you can see in this picture, it's on her left side and mine naturally is on my left side. So I'm just going to bring that out a little bit with some brow pencil. And finally, I'm going to set everything and melt everything together with some facial spray. And now to complete the full transformation, all you need are the right clothes and hairdo. Alright guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Don't wear it on your head. I just love finding new places to wear diamonds. You must let me do something for you to show my gratitude. Oh, thank you ever so. May I, uh, may I kiss your hand? I always say a kiss on the hand might feel very good. But a diamond tiara lasts forever. But square cut or pear shape, these rocks don't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. That most of all a lady loves to love. And what is more, a lady loves to live. And what is more.